1989, a game that invented its own genre was released for the Amiga and Macintosh. Sim City, an urban planning simulator that allowed you to develop and run your own virtual cities, controlling everything from transportation and power distribution to taxes and population growth. For a game of such intricate complexity, looking back, it is impressive to think that Will Wright, the game's designer, managed to create something so sophisticated with just half a megabyte of memory, which was the minimum requirement for the original unexpanded edition of the game. The sheer popularity of SimCity soon led to ports to other systems, including the Commodore 64. Shrinking the game down from 512 kilobytes to 64 kilobytes was a significant achievement, although Will had originally written the game on a C64 back in 1985 before he could find a publisher for it, so he would have at least known that such a port was, in theory, possible. But what about the BBC Micro? That machine has just 32 kilobytes of memory, and depending on what video mode you're in, you can expect to have no more than about 20 kilobytes to program a four-color game in. And yet, an excellent port of SimCity to the Beep was released by Superior Software in 1990, just a year after the original game's release. That incredible feat of programming was carried out by legendary games developer Peter Scott, and back in 2021, he shared his memories with me in an interview at the Virtual A-Bug of how he went about it. Here's Peter now explaining what it was like setting about writing that port of SimCity for the BBC Micro. Let's talk about a game that I think you're justly much more proud of, um, SimCity. <laughs> which didn't sell anywhere near as much as Predator, which really... <laughs> I spent uh, 12 months, like nine months on, on, on this. And, you know, well, I, I said I played it, you know, because SimCity isn't really a game, is it? It's, yeah, it might have the occasional monster turning up, but it's... it's yeah, it's the same. It's a simulation, and you know, and they might put a statue up to you, and I think that's the highest accolade you can have in the game. Um, <laughs> so you know, and and it's up. But they send everything in the kitchen sink. I mean, it all oh, you know, box files and algorithms and drawings and every single like bit of the city uh, all turned up. It was like wow. Um, and I had an Amiga version and the C sixty four, and was there another version? Uh, I got all the vast amounts of stuff and I spoke to Will Wright, the original originator, um, on the phone a couple of times. Uh, he welcomed me on board in a very American sort of, you know, uh, chummy sort of way uh, and says, sir, I says, well, the BBC Micro has 20k of memory. And he went, ha, 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 ha. Went, seriously? I went, yeah. I said, I said you did the couple of 64 version. He said, but that's so cut down. I hope you're not going to write something like that. I went, oh, okay. Um, I said, I'll do my best. And so, um, I, so I sat there with the algorithm. I sat there for a whole two weeks. I didn't design any fonts. I didn't do anything. I thought, right, this is a proper program. Come on, you've got to do this properly. Um, and so I, I you know, sat, sat, went through all the algorithms and worked out all the logic between all the different bits and pieces. And, you know, because some of it's a bit abstract. You know, you plant a tree in a city that gentrifies the area, which makes the house prices go up, which makes the people who live there, but they get fussier and there's more traffic and the cars get bigger and all these millions of different things. Um, and obviously, every one of these takes a bit of memory. Um, mm -hmm. And graphic-wise, you know, you have to have lots of maps and, and zoom in and all that sort of stuff. Then at the end of a year, when you're calculating stuff, you, you know, where, you, where am I going to store all this data? It's generating to calculate what's happening and, and redo the landscape and everything. I'm going to have to use the screen and switch it off for the first time, which, which is why the screen goes blank at the end of every, at the end of every, every section. But um, so, so, and then there's Godzilla turning up occasionally, uh, which, you know, is sort of a bit <laughs> random, but, you know... Um, and then, then there was the French, where infograms had the rights, like sort of European rights. So the, the French were involved. So, and occasionally, I get calls from someone who couldn't speak English, um, just asking me some stuff about it, because because they were trying to please the Americans. But I'd already spoken to the Americans, so it was a little bit sort of yeah, you know, my comedy allo allo calls, um, <laughs> which is quite amusing. But um, but yes, yeah, so, so I, and it was amazing. It was one of those things where where I sort of programmed bits of it, and yeah. You know, I can almost swear that bits of it happened organically. It came not, not that it came to life. It's not you know, but that you know, the thing with the trees sort of worked, even though I didn't explicitly program it in. It's like other connections that were programmed in sort of made everything, you know. And and then you have to go and try and wreck the assumptions of the game, to see if it what effect it would have on you. And that's when I realised they were all American assumptions. If you see what I mean, in that mm -hmm. low taxes equals good, um, high taxes equals bad. Now. I don't want to get into politics. It's a, a, a mugs game to get into politics, and you know, but but 
that sort of view might not be entirely held by and might not seem entirely logical to someone in, say, Europe. So, yeah. Um, so no one wants to pay taxes, but people might not want homeless people. You know, there's all this sort of stuff, like, you know, and it's all there baked at the game. I'm thinking, mm. oh, okay, how do I feel about that? I'm not talking to Richard um, or Steve about it and just like say, how do you feel about this? And they're like, oh, and, and I don't think it occurred to them because it hadn't occurred to me beforehand that, you know, a bit of politics involved here. Um, so I, I so I just remember sort of going through and being a bit more fair, <laughs> just just trying to make it a bit more logical that mm. what you wanted was a combination of where the taxes weren't so low that everything fell to bits and all those trees planted just with that because no one looked after them. But you, you know, you didn't want taxes so high that no one had any money and that all the businesses would fail. So you, you'd have somewhere in between um, the equilibrium state, which is, you know, yeah, the wishy-washy middle, blah, 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 but but it's yeah, that's the way you sort of. And you could be successful with lower taxes if if you know they were very low and you managed to deliver. The, the city wasn't crammed because you planned everything properly, and you could be very successful with high taxes if the people were getting lots of services and and felt happy. Hmm. Uh, so, so you know it wasn't like an either or, but it was quite a, quite an interesting thing. And it was I think the first thing I wrote that you know, artificial intelligence is a strange term. It's like you know. Machine learning is what that really is. It's not it's not artificial intelligence in the slightest. It's not intelligent at all. Mm. And um, yeah, I've got quite a lot of strong views on that kind of thing. And so so I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. that but it's almost like a, like a little micro thing. Things seem to connect together that I didn't connect, and um, it all worked as a whole, which I was really pleased with because it meant it worked. Because I couldn't actually yeah. program everything in there because there wasn't enough memory, and it would have been plodding really really slowly. So so I was really pleased with it, and you know it played. It was it was much better than the C sixty four version with a lot more memory, and I think that was disc only. Um, uh, so it was much better than that. Um, it wasn't quite as nice as the Amiga version, I have to say. But uh, yeah, um, I'm just glad it wasn't the three D one. Um, but it was a and it was it was a really it was a challenge. It was all it was quite hard to do, uh, and I I went into it scared, and I came out thinking actually I'm all right. This programming lark, I, I can I can sort of get by. I I know what I'm doing, and um, it gave me a bit more confidence. I think so. I enjoyed doing it. I mean, it's something that you'd be justly proud of. I mean, to think that you could squeeze like so much into what nowadays would be what a Twitter icon, basically. Or like, I mean, <laughs> in terms of the amount of memory you were actually working with, it's incredible. And it just, I, I, was, I was talking the other day with um, someone about uh, someone online about a, a Mac icon. I, I do mm. things like nowadays. You know, I learned I recently last few years learned CSS and HTML and, and JavaScript and stuff just so I could redesign annoying bits of browsers I don't like and websites because, you know, just to, to make them a bit nicer in my, my view. Um, and, you know, Mac icons now are 1,024 by 1,024. That's a standard icon this big on your Mac is 1,024 by 1,024. So if you've got, like, you know, quite a lot of colors in there, as, as a lot of them have, they're a horrible mixture of things with shadows and things without shadows now. It looks a bit of a mess, but which is why I want to customize them. But um, my OCD kicks in. But um, that takes up more memory. One of those icons is often 150K. Uh, and, you know, and the Photoshop files, if you've got one of, of the three layers, can, can be sort of four megabytes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and that was like 19.9K worth of code. So, so a little bit more time probably went into it than, you know, even one of Apple's like, many redesigned icons, but it's the, so, so you know you, you speak to someone who like who sends you a, a, a picture they've taken on the phone, which is like twelve thousand by nine thousand resolution that they're looking at on a screen this big, which is a little bit yeah, my goodness, there's no compression going on there, uh, and and you know which is four gigabytes, and you think you know that that's every game I ever wrote times a hundred, <laughs> which just seems quite an extraordinary thing. And I mean, in 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 fairness, I know it didn't obviously have the sort of instant sales of Predator, but it, it sold for a long time, though, didn't it? It did, yeah. It was one of those long tail things. That, you know, um, I mean, it got really good reviews, you know, which, again, I was very pleased with. But, um, but you know, the and I got an advance when I finished it, and because I'd been working quite a long time, you know, they, they gave me a, a bigger advance because, you know, it was it obviously cost more money as well because it was to buy because it was a more complicated game. Mm. Um, but, you know, it was towards the end of the Beeb's sort of um, preeminence, if you, if you like, and so... There were, and because I mean, I don't think SimCity really the first version. It sold well, and it was well known and well regarded. But because it wasn't really a game, <laughs> you know, it's much much more of a thing you can look at. 
Um, there was a thing called Activision did called Little Computer People, which is a bit like the Sims. And pe- these little people would walk around and just watch them and occasionally would like leave them a drink or something. It, it, and this was like an equivalent of that. It was, you know, there wasn't, you could have a strategy and stuff and you were doing stuff, but it, there was no, you didn't get the end of a level and rescue a princess and a horrible sexist sort of uh, anything. It, you know, it was just a thing that kept going. Mm. And um, so, so it was a, I, I think it did, Certainly, I was getting roller checks long after I thought I would, and long after I think superior, I think it was you know because people were still buying it, and uh, you know because so there must have been something. I was very proud of having done that. It was like sort of you know the the thing that you know I can always point to that, and mm. no, I tend not mention it much nowadays because you know why would I? But um, when I've been talking with programmers, I, I occasionally do talks at big software companies with names rhyming with frugal and maple and um hate book um and i don't do work for them anymore um and um i'm normally the comedy person who turns it when there's a conference on virtually or in the real world uh, on a friday afternoon and tells the jokes I, I normally do i've been on the internet for 35 years and here's 35 things i've learned and all contradictory and they're all rubbish because that's the internet isn't it you know, so you, you can't believe anything on the internet everything on the internet is true you know that, that kind of thing and then i slightly berate the developers who are normally at these conferences for living in california and not really understanding that their screen will get dirty and only clean it it switches everything on the phone off or whatever you know just little things like that and talk and occasionally i've been in situations where people been talking i suggested that one of these things that um personal assistants should have regional accents a bit like my lovely regional accent um because that would make it more relatable to people and i told you know to americans mainly about how in britain a jolly accent like a northern english accent like mine is seen as a nice thing whereas a liverpudlian accent is seen as a different thing and that accents place people in you know stereotypes come out all kinds of things which are good and bad but there are lots of call centers up north because this accent sort of seems to be like people like hearing it um, somehow for some reason. Um, so, so, so I suggest that. And then this guy started going about coding and memory storage. And went, well, I put SimCity in. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me a bit of a punchline to, to, to any technical thing. And it was all in machine code, you know, none of this C nonsense of high level rubbish, slow and efficient nonsense. And yeah. And I, I sound like a, sort of a, a very old man, sort of like talking about the war and whatever. But uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I, I'm very proud that I got it to work at all, and um, it, it it you know it ended up more than you know making enough money. I wasn't really doing it for the money I was doing because I wanted to have done SimCity. So, well, I mean, you have every reason to be proud of it because oh, it is it's a real accomplishment. Well, if you enjoyed that, there's lots more over on the Abug YouTube channel where you can watch the full interview with Peter, link in the description below. I'll be exploring more of these Acorn dev histories in the future, so please let me know what you thought of this one, and until the next time, goodbye!